Hello, dear friends. We're starting our Sunday webinar, as usual, with Dr. Michael Lightman, Michael Senilevich, Boris, and I'm Simeon Vinokur. We're the instructors of International Academy of Kabbalah. Please ask questions. We're continuing the topic of the teaching of the Kabbalah and its essence, according to the study of Bala Sulam. It turns out that it's a very popular topic. And please ask your questions, and we will... Um, ask them here on the show. We have 22. In, um, applying to this text, what is the worthy action? That's the, that's where where it begins. The problem in Kabbalah is that all of our earthly actions are based on the action itself. You you have either done something or didn't do anything. Somewhere in court, maybe you would be given. Uh, you compromise that that w this action wasn't intentional, but a good action or a bad action, whether you wanted it to do it or not to do it. Uh, in our world, the action is what matters. Our world is a world of actions, completely. According to it, we judge everything else. All of those that consider the intention, we cannot be sure whether uh, this intention was correctly interpreted, valued, weighted. It's not something we can do in our world. While an action could be measured, it could be, uh, can be positioned, seen. it could be seen. The, the correct material result comes from an action, but uh, when it comes to intentions and motivations are something that are not clear to us and we ourselves forget them, and there's nothing we can do with that. That's why there's a huge issue here, and the science of Kabbalah says, since we are creatures, very special creatures, we consist of actions and intentions. So what should we do with our intentions? It turns out that the more a person is further from an animal, his intention is stronger and intention becomes very important and something that determines the action itself. The action itself could be insignificant, but the intention on this action could be humongous. And uh, how much intention that the one performing the action has paid attention to this intention and the one that is a receiver of my action uh, how much intention did I pay to him let's say I gave him a small present but I put in my entire soul into this and this was very difficult for me to do and that person knows it in that case he values my intention he measures my intention my efforts so how should we measure this in our world there's a big problem here because the world becomes more global more interdependent and somehow we need to gather between us the system of interconnections and only according to our actions we will not be able to judge this we will not be able to uh, let's say I work on some factory and I create materials and I my input is measured via how many products I produce and my salary as well perhaps we have so many uh, we need to create uh, these careers perhaps where we can measure the intention how these people awaken me, how I awaken them. Here, everything, intention starts to have more and more meaning, which is why our world has a big problem now. The more we develop, advance, the more we become people and become further from our animalistic state, the more there's a need to measure intentions, but we cannot measure it. So, the attitude of a person determines the world. So, what are we supposed to do? We just say uh, that. This, this is a big problem. The world itself becomes a consequence of our 
of our intentions. So on one hand, we can't see our intentions, and we can't see in uh, the other person. So how can we approach this thing? Well, there turns out to be uh, something uh, of a crisis here. The world enters the state of crisis because we cannot do anything with one another since we have incorrect intentions. How can we value these intentions? We don't know. It turns out that we're in a world that's not material, that between us there erupt all kinds of feelings, interconnected sensations that we cannot measure and consider in world is becoming simply for us a some sort of a incomprehensible so they turn to be more important than actions they turn out to be more important than actions and it's important that people would be in them the world is somehow pushing us out of itself it was built in a simple way it was built for animalistic states so those natures inanimate vegetative and animalistic they exist in our world sometimes I like to watch uh, nature channel it's um, here it's a uh, channel 43 what do we have there no one's uh, shy I want to eat you if you can escape then you will escape if not then I'll eat you uh, things are not built on intentions but on specific actions and the intentions are clear because actions and intentions they come together in this case but in our world we when we um, ascend to the level of man we ascend above the animalistic state and here we need to start considering the intention and intentions our intentions we can only value um, with the help of Kabbalah. This is an entire issue here. Give, uh, can you give me an example of intentions? What, what, what are they? In a clear way, I cannot, because in our case, intentions are connected to actions. Let's say, okay, I have certain intentions towards you. You don't know what they are, right? I need to determine within myself what they are and check them. Maybe with my intention, I wish you harm. If I harm you, then in intention, I do the same thing for myself. In intentions, things are very simple on one hand. If we enter this world of intentions, then we erase all of our actions. We do a delete. We delete our entire world and there remain only certain points and the intentions of these points towards one another. This is the spiritual world. Try this. Try to imagine right now, let's say seven, eight billion points, each one of those points. It has uh, it relates to others with with a certain intention, either good or bad. Let's there could be millions of different uh, uh, names to these intentions. With us, it's very simple: either plus or minus intention to bring somebody good uh, in relation to how that person understands it not you or to do something bad to that person also how you understand it not he not him well there could be just only those two intentions yes there are only two intentions but each one can be uh, valued according to its uh, weight well i think most of the time the person just uh, intends uh, how can i improve my day uh, my state and so on not on behalf of others in this case uh, well, perhaps sometimes, yes, if uh, with this he tries to do something good or bad for the other or not. Uh, like the example of the uh, worker, the factory worker, he comes to the factory t uh, to earn the bread to, to eat. Here this has a connection, doesn't have connection to people. We're talking about a connection of a person to others. These connections determine our world today. They determine our path, passage into the upper world. This is what I need to determine. 
Okay, once again, there is an intention for uh, one's own sake. There is an intention for the uh, someone else's sake. It's not clear, really. Uh, and there is uh, an intention for my own sake, but not on behalf of others. This is something we don't consider. Is it uh, for the sake of myself or the, for, for the sake of others? So, intention for others is in spiritual, intention for myself is egoistic, this is in our world. We take into account uh, only those intentions that, intention that exists between people. Now, is this an intention negative or positive? If they're positive for others, then they're called spiritual. If they're negative, then they're called earthly. All intentions of, from our earthly degree are for our own sake and uh, harmful to others. Victor is asking, acts and intention of animals um, match and in human don't, right? Animals don't have certain intentions. Their intentions are tied to their actions. But with people, actions can be different. Well, the intentions are always egoistic. You said this world is like an animal world, and the question is: Is this world exists for people, for humans as, uh, as an animal ground, or or as a starting ground for yeah. for the soul? Yes, the existence of people in this world, which is called animalistic, in our case, everyone is similar to animals, and in order to make this world uh, this uh, starting point towards advancement, towards the upper world, towards intention to bestow in the spiritual world. In the spiritual, all actions are erased. Like imagine this uh, X-ray map, you only see intentions. So Paul, say, Paul says that love uh, toward others or toward myself? Yes. It's, um, okay, question from Vienna. My mother has positive intention to their kids. Why is this harmful to others? It's not for our own sake or uh, this is just animalistic. It doesn't belong to one or the other. But he still brings this example. I just bring an example, no more than that. The mother acquires it. Uh, he, she, she gets it from the nature. Why do you call the spiritual a positive intention towards others? Why is this specifically the spiritual? Because it's similar to the uh, common uh, force of the nature, which is called the Creator. That's all. And when a person, uh, to some degree, uh, wants to become uh, like the Creator, that's when it's called the spirituality. Uh, that when the where the rice is uh, named a uh, person uh, uh, like the creator. So we right. remove if we remove all these eight billion bodies and leave just the intention, what will happen? It's uh, not his uh, animate body. He's only his intention. Uh, the rest is animalistic body. What else is there? How do people differ when they were born with one intention or another? As it is written, the person is born as a wild animal with uh, animalistic de desires and intentions, everything for his own sake. Everything is for my own sake. For another? Yes, for the other, bef because we are in the enclosed system. Even if I don't, um, I'm trying. I don't try to achieve some goal. I still try. I still. I'm still connected with it with others. So you're saying that this is the initial state, and there's no other state. What about altruists? No other. No other for sure. Those are just uh, hidden egoists. They don't try to for other sakes. Uh, they're enforced to it by their uh, na nature. Question: uh, Isn't an attitude of a person uh, is a direct consequence of how the Creator has created him, his environment, and his genes? That's naturally so. What he says, uh, I can't do anything with this. Well, why is it said? Just go to the Creator, which created you this way. He created you this way. So this understanding is already progress when the person understands this. The progress, of course. That's a certain start, starting point, right? 
there is no correction in it. Uh, the cause is that we need to correct this nature. You can always say that the creator has created this way. So what next? Uh, the creator created, then you need to correct it. Question. If a Kabbalist has the strongest intention, that means that everything in the world is determined by Kabbalists? No. In the world, there are exist. Look how many uh, billions of people, and they all determine the state of the world. Not only Kabbalists. The Kabbalists exist in the world only to be uh, like information desk for those who try to, who wants to correct themselves. Question. Which tool do you offer for controlling an intention? Uh, that exists. That's Tinsum, uh, Masakh, the uh, concealment, uh, the screen, the reflected light, and there's interaction with the direct light, uh, with the absolute intention. The light is the absolute intention, absolute kind, good intention. And to the degree I am like it, I can uh, interact with it. Please tell me, the intention is hidden. Others' intentions are hidden from a person. We don't know what their intentions are, right? We don't know. Why is it so? If everything would be revealed and open, it would be easier to live. Now you would be like an animal. You would just uh, act from uh, out of your nature. But this way is done, uh, is created this way because so that people can change themselves, they can reveal their nature and they would enter into the proper um, uh, mingling. Why even the egoistical intentions are hidden from a person? Uh, I think not a lot of people agree that the people have only egoistic intention. You, even though it's written like that, pe people in real life don't really feel this. They say they're good intentions, they're bad intentions, but that it would be a hundred percent we would be born uh, like a wild donkey. It's written in the Zohar 2000 years ago, okay, so what? No, 2,000 years ago, yes. Today is different. Today is, but he's better. Yeah, there are good people and there are bad people. Well, we are born absolute egoists, my dear. According to the spiritual world, if we uh, uh, evaluate ourselves in that way, we see that we're absolutely uh, flawed beings. But was that hidden from a person that his intentions are egoistic? He wouldn't be able to exist. He would hang himself. He would uh, eat himself. He would not overcome it. Uh, it has to happen gradually uh, to the degree it reveals the, the, your negative nature. How else? We need to compare it to the positive. We need to uh, uh, reveal, open up the uh, uh, all sorts of flaws, all sorts of problems, all sorts of illnesses between, uh, between us and uh, cure them. A question. If I feel an intention of a person and I understand my ego egoistic intention, my own, is not called a... If I feel an intention of others and I understand my egoistic intention, can I consider that attainment? Well, that's to some degree is the attainment, yes, of course. Next. Next excerpt. Only the light returns one to the source. It's considered a real beginning. So there is an upper quality, the quality of love and bestowal of absolute kindness, and uh, which we can uh, attract toward us, toward us, so that it would affect us, so that. It would change us, uh, and uh, gradually we will uh, sense its effect on us. Uh, to the, in a sense, how we, uh, how what kind of attitude we have to, toward other, others, it's not going to have, it's not going to happen immediately. All of a sudden, we will uh, just uh, start uh, throwing uh, around uh, all sorts of uh, tasty things. We will just feel the right attitude toward the world in us. It's going to be balanced. It's not just going to can be consisting of all kindness if somebody is just like sitting on our shoulders on our head but it will be uh, balanced 
uh, we will have an attitude toward the world to the maximum, optimal in the most optimal way, to bring to bring the world to the next degree every time, uh, more and more uh, kind in the sense of uh, attitude toward each other. Because the world is complex, and our attitude toward it is not going to be simple, but it's also going to be complex and very variable. Uh, and uh, sometimes it will seem to us that we become worse that, uh, rather than better. There are there are problems of growth. But since we're talking about the light that returns to the source, there's a question from Ukraine. Hello. Uh, do Kabbalistic books influence a person when he reads them on his own or with the group? Alone as well, read them as you wish, uh, but preferably that they're authentic, uh, that they're on your level, and that you you would find yourself correctly in them. Another question. What does it mean that uh, books need to be correctly studied? What is the correct study? The correct study is when you come to our campuses, or else uh, our courses are called, and there we have a list of literature, and you work at that literature. With question. That literature. question. How do you work with the books? Well, with books, I'm already, uh, I've worked with them. I went through them many, many times already. There are some articles or some letters of sorts which I've read maybe, maybe a few hundred times already. And I always find something new in them, by the way. So there are no sources in Kabbalah which I wouldn't know and which I wouldn't work with on in the original language. What does it mean to work through a book? Work through a book means that I read it, I highlight them, I uh, make excerpts, um, I compare, I look for where else there is a, a similar material. Like uh, it's like like usual work of a uh, of researcher. And when you say that you um, shorten the works, make them concise. Yeah, there are different variants of working with uh, sources because more very often I translate the sources. If I don't if I don't translate them, I often take take the sources and I begin to shorten it. I write it in the language of original. Uh, the original language is Hebrew language, and and I when I write it, I shorten it. I sort of uh, take out the essence of it, and this essence is what I want today in my state. What I want to see in it, and maybe next time I will make another different. Uh, uh, exertion out of it, and when I take uh, another time, when I take the sources, I take excerpts, and I like to give them names, uh, uh, come up with answers and questions. I try to work with text so that I am in them and the text is in me, but and that is with all the texts. Uh, not not with all the text. There are some when just obligates you to uh, have that attitude toward them. It's like it feels like you're chewing through them. Okay, another question? Yes, yeah, of course. Books allow us to receive knowledge, but how can we learn to exist uh, within what they write about? No, 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 it's not the knowledge in the books. Uh, uh, quite the opposite. There has been uh, about 40 years ago that period has passed when I was trying to read and trying to uh, trying to know what I read. Now I read all the sources for a long time now, only so that I can get a sense of them, so that they would change in me something when I read the 
when I've read some uh, source, a book, and it changed, it changed something in me, though I feel myself uh, um, very uh, confused in, in, in fog, I'm still happy because it affected me. It works on me. And I leave it. And after some time, I return to it, and maybe not. And I try to feel how the source affected me in different studies, in different sources. That's, that's what I want. I'm interested in how a source has changed me, to what degree it affected me and gave me a completely different uh, perspective on the world. There are such a serious sources, a serious m meaning in the way they affect me, that after that I just completely changed my opinion, my view, my perception. That's uh, This is intention? Uh, yeah, in the beginning I just need to acquire the material. I need to know what Kabbalah talks about it, what's written. Uh, make some uh, lists for myself. Uh, today with computers it's even easier. I uh, created some pages in the past where I would make copies with the, with the computer already of all sorts of uh, um, definitions, especially. Then I compared them, how true they are and how not, from my, pers from my perspective. It's work, basically. And that's that upbrings a person. I suggest you to, to be interested in the uh, essential changes rather than uh, mental. If we talk in Russian, there is no truth in in the legs. The Kabbalah says there is no truth in the brain. Please. The question, please. Uh, to each sources, you have some kind of uh, uh, tune uh, or some kind of mood. Uh, you approach the test. You approach the. Not all of a sudden, you, you decide to read something, for instance. You say that there is some kind of uh, sensation or some kind of emptiness, and you come to the Talmud uh, Can you give some kind of advice? Rav, I cannot give you an advice. It's still early. They'll later see themselves within each one of these sources. What you mentioned, that your desire to change is your intention, your approach to study. It's a foundation out of which a new intention grows. The person needs to change what he wants to change. A person needs to know it. I want to shift, to change, in accordance with the Creator, which is why all these sources, since they come from Him, Kabbalists, are people that right out of being in complete contact with the Creator, which is why I take whatever they write as an opinion of the Creator, which is why it's very important for me. And I have to properly determine what Creator is. It, it doesn't interest me. But I want to become like Him. I, if I follow their advice, then I will become like Him. I don't see Him, I see their advices, and I try to follow them. But I understand those advices as I understand them. So you try to understand them in accordance to what the Kabbalists say. Um, a question: Is it does it affect the um, intention of a person to to harm uh, somebody on physical le level, like uh, hurricanes, or how can we understand all that? Since our entire nature is integral and interconnected then naturally our uh, act, acts upon any parts of nature influence all other of its parts, which is why when we are talking about influencing people, we influence all other parts of nature.
And when we relate to the inanimate nature, then we act upon other parts of nature in a less significant way. So my evil attitude toward the other, it just like penetrates through the depth of the uh, Absolutely. World. These are the issues that we have with ecology today. So we just invoke uh, all the destruction in the world. Yes, absolutely everything. And uh, humanity has existed for thousands of years, and we all had uh, bad intentions. No, so we no. weren't in a situation to change anything with our intentions in the past. Only now, from the beginning of the 20th century, but before that, no. Look, what what we've done during 20th century. As Kabbalists say, people have entered a new state. Look, there were 2 billion people, which is uh, how, how much our planet can withstand. And today we have 8, and so on and so forth. During these last hundred years, we have brought our entire system out of balance. So, two billion can sustain that level of egoism. Uh, it cannot. We need like we need aid, right, for this ego. If we'd have been developing correctly, then we would need eight billion people. A question. The light uh, returns to source. What is this force, the light, and which source it returns me to? Force of bestow, a quality of bestow, of love, a quality of correct in interconnection of all parts of the soul. That's what it means that the light returns to the source. I'm in this common system the one soul only in relation to me i feel how it is how much it is shattered and separated and at the same time i feel myself in a crisis an internal one an external one and all of its um, cases a uh, question from baku can there be intention which is supported with uh, um, consciousness and with will I wouldn't say that our will and our conscience are in some way are correlated with intention. I wouldn't say that. Because will and conscience, when a person begins to sense his intention, intention is from a spiritual world uh, level, but conscience and will are from this level, which is why they're incompatible. Question from Clive. And if in the group there are unrevealed uh, evil intentions, how can it uh, affect the group? They will be able to change this. And of course there will be bad intentions, specifically upon revelation of this bad intention and their correction, there will appear all sorts of cor corrections and advancements forward. So the uh, advancement on the letter, that's, that's yes. what it consists of? Revealing of uh, in corrections and then correcting them. What is the correlation between the uh, intention and, and the brain of a person, uh, consciousness? Is there any connection? Practically none. Intention is our soul. It's our spiritual component. Everything else relates to the body, to this animalistic body. No, hold on a second. If I look at a person here and I want to take advantage of him, uh, my connection with him, I want to take advantage of it for my own sake. That's a normal thing and I understand that I want to take an advantage of it. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that I feel it, I said it. It's your animalistic state. It's, it's not a soul or an animalistic soul, I don't know. Is it an intention? Let's not get confused. This is your animalistic intention. It's, it's an intention and it's related to my brain activity? or? Of course, everything is in this world is interconnected. But true intentions, for the sake of another, they're in a, on a different degree. Upon the exit of your, exiting yourself, when you ascend above yourself, when you leave your shell 
and begin to work only with intention towards others for their sake, for their benefit, not for the benefit that they consider in their egoistic desires, but with the benefit that with the, another benefit that you measure in your egoistic desires, but with the intention that you receive from above, that's how you begin to relate to others. That is called a state of the upper world, a state of the soul. Okay, and that upper intention, does it have the emotions, the feeling, some kind of brain activity, maybe? An intention is feelings and emotions. So it includes everything, the um, brain activity and everything, just spiritual, right? It's spiritual, but it's directed towards another. How can, the question, how can I interact with others? How can I build the right intention with others? This is done gradually with the help of Kabbalah. It influences you, evokes within you the upper light, evokes the upper light. You don't feel it. You only feel how you're changing and these gradual changes will form within you something called the correct intention toward other which are not uh, in relation to everybody everything you'll see that everything outside of you is the creator why do we have this reality where there is me there is my egoistic uh, being and this is such a small illusion uh, really you don't even understand how small it is but it exists only for you to ascend and to understand it regardless of the upper world so, so the question how can we start ascending from this intention first we need to acknowledge it or something to study to work in the group to pray for the friends to ask for their spiritual ascent and that's it next exit, exit. Okay. Uh, the revelation of the Creator is not uh, one action, uh, one time action, but an ongoing matter that revealed over a period of time sufficient for the disclosure of all the great degrees and appear from above downwards and from up below upwards. On top of them and at the end of them appears the Creator. It is like a person proficient in all the countries and people in the world who cannot say that the whole world has uh, been revealed to him before he has completed his examination of the last person and the last country. What are they talking about here? They say that there's one system, a system of desires. And about the desires, there are intentions which we need to develop and connect between one another. And from these correctly unified intentions, we form our soul. Uh, desires remain below, they don't change. The main thing is the intention their attitude, relationship to one another. Uh, is what builds between us what is called the soul, the spiritual world. The spiritual world is a world of intentions. My attitude towards others, of course, this is based on desires, certain actions perhaps, but basically our world ends here. We begin to give preference, importance to the intention. And then all of the actions of our world lose their uh, their importance, their amplitude. Such a question um, students always ask uh, when we talk about the intention, when I act, and I can clearly uh, define that I do an action for my own sake. And a couple of doesn't say that I need to through with my will that I need to overcome myself and I need to do something for the other's sake. It just doesn't work. It works in the group. In the group, it works. Oh, in a group, it does. Uh, um, otherwise, uh, we gather in a group. I'm in the group. I try to do as a member of the group everything uh, in order for the group to advance successfully. No actions I can do, but intentions I can't. If 
with these actions, I I will invoke evoke the intention. So the question is why everything works through texts and everything. No, okay. everything works through the friends only in the measure that you evoke the importance, the desire towards spiritual work. All of these texts, all of these studies, uh, they're sort of preludes and not very strong actions with the help of which you maybe just push yourself towards it, inch yourself closer towards it. But in reality, the true influence upon yourself and the group happens when you pull push friends towards spiritual advancement again an example there's boris and i feel that i want to do something for the sake of boris and all of a sudden there's revealed that i want to take advantage of him and somehow through with uh, my will i want to i can overcome it and i can do something for the sake of boris is that a spiritual intention i see that i cannot do it uh, the action i can but even if you will do an action without an intention, if this action seems to you for his benefit, then that's already good. So in a group that will work, but uh, toward the other people which I work with or my family, can I still do I need, still need to ch check my intention with them? I wouldn't do it. We recommend to do these things only in the group. So the intention I need to only check it in the group. Yes, with others you just need to be polite and nothing more. Irene is asking, I want to love my husband, my kids, It's uh, it, it pains me to hear that I need to do it only in the group, and, uh, by the way, it's with everybody, everybody in order about it. to develop our soul, we need to be egoists, and above this egoism, develop our correct relationships and attitudes of love and bestowal above the egoism. In the family, with my relatives, I cannot have correct relationships, which is why there's no need to talk about me advancing spiritually, spiritually in there. With them, you need to live a happy, nice life, but on the animalistic level, that's it. Why is it created this way? You'll understand this later. Don't criticize. Only because it's not clear to you, you want to say right away that it's not correct. Just say, I don't understand this. Most of the time people spend in their families. How can not so what? manage it? Please tell me, what opportunities can you use in your family? Question. Uh, as a result of uh, correction, the uh, person can uh, have a different attitude toward his family, his co-workers and so on. Friends, correctly. I'm trying to tell you that it's natural that all of this I, of course, need to do with the family, the correct attitude towards my family, my friends, but not upon, but, but not with the cor this correct attitude towards my relatives, I can become a spiritual personality, the one who attains the Creator, because here is where my animalistic qualities are are acting, my egoistic desires and they're involved here only in the group when I want to attain the entrance into the upper world and do it correctly in the most optimal way that I need to do it in this Kabbalistic group with my wife, with my kids, with my mother-in-law do with them whatever you want you can create a group it's still not what you need to do with your friends question uh, if my husband studies Kabbalah will he love me more or less uh, I don't know what for her love is we're not gonna we're not going to enter these problems. Uh, all sorts of interpretations of what love is will probably have different interpretations. Uh, the love is something which is for advance, advancement of your soul. And for you, the love is this earthly level. Towards your husband, we can all, all depict that and how you depict it. Depict it. Now, if this couple wants to develop spiritually together, then doesn't does not exist. Uh... Naturally, if they want to advance, 
the most important advancement is in the group that so Please, uh, please forgive me, my friends. You cannot move me from that point. I am for um, studying with wife, reading with her, but the true advancement, where he can feel how what egoist he is, it's not with his wife, but in the group with his friends. And don't confuse yourself. Uh, in vain, uh, you will stop in the middle of uh, the, of the path, and you will just be you will just immerse in all sorts of uh, calculations in your families. Okay, everything is clear with the family. Okay, work. Uh, we still have jobs, right? Uh, we work, and around us there are a lot of colleagues. I don't need anything from them. I want to be with them in good uh, relationships and nothing more. But isn't this whole fact of people wanting to use one another shown there? Rabash told me how he was working on the road, on building a road. He would go for a week, they would live outside in tents. During the day, they would work with uh, shovels. Uh, they would uh, put the concrete and and during the night they would sleep in tents. The, you would say the, the, the day is over, the work day is over and they sit around the fire and they talk about the nonsense about the politics and everything and he goes to study the books and they would always say that you disrespect us, you want to look at yourself, you're so uh, uh, what's there to talk to you about? Uh, you're like kids, so you discuss the politics. I study with uh, smart people that wrote those books and there's nothing to talk to, to talk with you about. And they just said, okay, so let it be. So you said this on purpose so they would leave them alone? You're naturally just, uh, you know, be, uh, let them know in advance. It's not, it's not related to you. It's like you're a free artist. You work on your in your work, and you have your own life at homes, and nothing else matters. Uh, like uh, fishing, you know, the fishing is probably you'll find some interest. Tell them that your fishing is the your entire life, and here it just doesn't matter. Uh, for you, what matters is where to find the uh, bait and where to spend time with. Question is, why is this so? Uh, later, you will understand why I need to be with such people in contact. No, and, until there's an an no answer, is like this. There is an answer, but it's too early for you to know. There, later. Question. Does the capitalist see the level, degree of his attainment of the upper, uh, of his ad attainment, advancement on the path? And what's in it? Next question. Question. If all of my feelings are born out of the ego, how not to get stuck in the illusions uh, that these egoistic feelings evoke within me? Always to study, always to be in the group, you will not, not get stuck. You will not um, escape it. When we study in the group, it's always every second. Uh, when we study, you see during our discussions what happens there. Okay, please tell me. People gather in groups, let's say, once a week. The rest of the time they have to be with us in the group. How? Just like that. Look, Plovdiv, uh, Vladimir, St. Petersburg, Shaolai, uh, Romania, they're all in our, in our zone, in our, in our time zone. When we have studies, they can be in our in our with us during those hours. Then maybe they can watch it some later. Doesn't matter. When I'm included, when I turn on the computer, I enter. I enter the archive. I pull a lesson from there, which was today, and I am at that lesson. I turn it on. This means to be in the group. 
Yes, that means that essentially I am in a group. So physically it's not necessary to be there. What can I do until I have the group next to me? Maybe at least once a week. It's always it's also good. But I I advance with neighborhood always. Okay, you look look at that city Ufa. Every time, every Sunday, there are more and more people there. Right. Look, for the first time I see this group. Look. Yeah, this, wow. besides big groups. Wow. Okay, so where does the creator is the creator leading us? He wants us to be together constantly all day from morning to night. The entire humanity, we all advance with big steps uh, to acknowledgement of necessity of the next level, next degree of this of uh, perception of that we are at the border line of it of that. So, people need to feel this separation between this world and the next world. Oh, what is the difference of animal and a human? Not the actions, but the thoughts, the intentions. Uh, what will this separation bring within a person? When people will see that they cannot do anything with just pure actions, but that we uh, flawed with intentions, then we will have to change. Please tell me, what is the desired maximum or minimum to be in a group? Let's say a person sleeps seven hours and does sports for one hour, music, etc. How many hours does he need to be in the group to advance I would I would suggest an hour a day. If each one of us for an hour a day would hear, would be able to listen what we study. And how is it? How is it called? Uh, Mac Online, we have it for one hour a week, one webinar a week. Then we have studies throughout the week. Uh, next, semester, next semester we'll have a, a workshop. It's quite comfortable for a person. Okay, perfect. We have a lot of a lot of other questions. We have four minutes left. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, question from Kiev. Can death bring a person downwards to to, to a lower spiritual level? That we need to discuss separately. Of uh, the effect of death on us mm -hmm. and us on death. If all, can we correct our actions through intention? Of course. Imagine if uh, in a court uh, somebody brings someone and he hit someone and all of a sudden uh, we see the, their intentions are revealed, that can change the uh, um, the act and uh, completely yeah, different court, way. By the way, in court they trial someone only according to intention. Exactly, that's what they try to do. What's the, what's their action? Question from one: What is a reward in Kabbalah? A reward, an advancement toward the Creator. All in all. Uh, the most uh, uh, fullest uh, correction of intention. Question from Moscow. How can I become an equal partner to the Creator? Okay, so then what? Why does a Creator need some sort of a person next to him? The after, the word after doesn't exist, my friend, because the exit to the upper world, it, it ascends a person to the uh, level where there is no time, there is no physical, there is no space. So, uh, to talk about the continuation of our questions, which is in the f within the frames of the uh, time and the space, we cannot uh, we cannot really apply that. There are no those uh, there are no conditions such conditions there on those uh, those attributes. How do I react to a bad intention towards me? It, it turns out that my intention becomes bad towards that person too. No, 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 that's incorrect statement. Uh, that's an incorrect question. If I sense the intention, first of all, I don't sense them, feel them. 
if I feel, if I see the uh, uh, negative actions of others toward me. Yes, then I automatically have a bad attitude towards him. No, why? If I try to act uh, spiritually, I can say that there's not else besides him, and that creator directs me uh, toward that specific person, and that's not just a person, it's a creator that stands behind him, and he regulates everything in such a way, and I act uh, toward him. Uh, how can I say? Uh, uh, in a balanced manner, uh, he doesn't uh, he doesn't uh, pose any uh, threat. Uh, all sorts of negative uh, negative um, uh, source of negative uh, acts. And everything is com comes from the creator. He acts. Last question. So, what to do to be in intention to uni unite or do uh, specific actions towards unity? A specific action toward the connection is our actions, and then we'll see how uh, these physical actions w uh, become uh, spiritual. We have two announcements. The course uh, uh, Foundations of Kabbalah will start soon. It's an online course. You can register 12th of April. You see the link. and. Until then, we have a seven-day intensive course that will help you to uh, integrate into our courses, Mac Online. What can I tell you? Uh, we'll see you next week. Try to be with us in our in our lessons, especially these days, because they are very intense. They are all related to the exit of egoism. This is the essence of the holiday Pesach. Pesach. Um, the exiting of our world to the spiritual world and how we need to ascend toward it from our uh, world uh, at the very bottom toward the world of spirituality. See you next week. Bye-bye.